Hello everybody and welcome back down into the dungeon for a quick look at what's growing on. You know, typical Sunday stuff. Um, uh, today we're going to throw in just a little bit of mad science with that too because... Well, it's already been brought up, um, so I might as well just throw it out there. I'm already getting a lot of concerned comments from you guys in regards to the war on aphids that we all know is coming. And I want to let you know, I do actually have a plan based on previous experience and based on what I'm taking to be a really good tip from a stogie. Um, yeah. So maybe we'll start this week's update with the mad science part of things, and then we will look at the plants. So, yeah, here we go. I may have mentioned this before, but I love the completely random and useful stuff I find all over this property. While cleaning out the long shed to make room for the chickens, I found this. So we're going to be using that today to mix up a bit of my so-called secret weapon, but it's not really a secret. Now, before I get too far into this, I want to remind you that while I do try and do things naturally and on the cheap, this is not necessarily an organic channel. <clears throat> What I have here I ordered from Amazon online. I'm sure I could have gotten a better price, but whatever, I ordered this anyway. Potassium sulfate is effectively a 0050 fertilizer. So, nothing for growth, really. Nothing for fruit production, but a whole lot towards like immunity and just overall plant health. Apparently it helps water move up and down the plant. The, the cells are like little tiny balloons and it helps with that. And, helps with the uptake of nutrients and basically according to, to Stogie it was exactly what his aquaponic garden needed and uh, he recommended that back in the days when I was still trying to deal with my ahi panic but I couldn't find some that I could afford so thanks to that stupid swag buck site that I visit this was effectively free it just cost me a little bit of time on my computer so no big deal got a bunch of little spider plant starts here surprise surprise anyway I was looking online and it says, you know, this is basically a solution for farmers. One pound of this, which is what we have here, is recommended for 1,000 square feet of um, garden space. So obviously I do not need a pound anytime soon, but it was the smallest package I could find. And honestly, buying one pound of this is a really bad financial choice. If I, I, like, I paid 15 theoretical dollars for this, but it would have been uh, 30 to buy five pounds of it, but that was sold out, so I got the short end of the stick there anyway. So I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of this into our beaker, and uh, yeah, we will begin the mad science portion of the film. So I figure I probably want to be using about half a gram of this at a time when I mix it in, but uh, ultimately I don't have a scale that measures that kind of stuff. So I'm going to use just a little bit on the spoon in kind of a more typical bare fashion. And uh, let's just kind of swirl this up, see how it dissolves. It's supposed to be fairly water soluble, and I can't say that I'm seeing too much of it in there as residue. We'll look down. Well, that's where it is, isn't it? All right, let me grab some carrot stalks to use as a whisk and see if we can get this mixed in a little better. Well, that dried carrot stem whisk more or less worked out. I got a floaty in there now, but that's not big, too much of a, a big deal. So, basically, I'm just going to dump that into my bucket. This generally gets filled from the dehumidifier, so, you know, it's about as clean as my water can get. And uh, I water my plants from here. However, the fish tank could use some of this, so I guess for now we'll just take some of this slightly more concentrated than it'll be for the rest of the plants. Light change. And uh, we'll mix it in here. Hopefully there will be no negative reactions for the fish and uh, all positive reactions for the plant. Change of light spectrum. The oregano, looking good, looking good. Here we can see these rosemary cuttings. These ones seem to be doing all right. The ones in the bucket behind us here, these ones look like they're very much drying out. So I have some, I have some very serious concerns there. The oregano though we've got, I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but the, the light green of new growth just all over that plant. So I'm trying really hard not to harvest from that until it's absolutely needed. These mint, on the other hand, probably took a good half a pound of mint out to the chickens about 10 minutes ago. They seem to enjoy that. 
Of all of the hens, Patches is the one who seems to really go for the fresh mint, so. The others will root around for sprouted seedlings like nobody's business, but Patches, she's in it for the mint. Oh, can you see this little tiny, this parsley recently got relocated. It's in here, this is the one that used to be on the Darwin table in a little styrofoam cup. Figured what the heck, this thing seems to work for herbs. Parsley is an herb, so we'll throw it in there. Does it seem like this plant has grown fairly well over the last week to anybody else? Yeah, seems like it to me. You know why it wasn't growing? You're, you're gonna get a good laugh out of this. This little tiny hose had been completely plugged with uh, fish solids <clears throat> that somehow made it through that little tiny mesh of a sponge. Anyway, this whole thing was completely plugged, as was this one beside it. This one, I stuck a, well, it's another carrot's whisk saved the day moment. I grabbed one of those longer ones, stuffed it up there, came out free, worked great. This one, on the other hand, was totally plugged. I had to suck on it like I'm siphoning gas. Next thing you know, I got a mouthful of fish waste. It was nasty, but the water, she flows again. Now that it's flowing again, plant sure seems a lot happier, doesn't it? Makes perfect sense, though. I mean, how long was it sitting without water in an aquaponic garden? Talk about getting ripped off, right? So, yes. Oh, I added a couple of the kale sprouts to the aquaponic garden. Not traditionally an herb, but kale has traditionally done very well for me in aquaponics in the past, so I'm, I'm hopeful. Yes. This mint, though, going absolutely crazy. So in theory, with the uh, potassium sulfate added to this, these plants should be absorbing the water just that little bit better, moving the nutrients around just that little bit better, which means they'll be pulling more stuff out of the water through here, so they'll be cleaning it for the fish just that little bit better. In theory, everybody wins here. Um, tragically, if I had taken the opportunity and had the, the chance to listen to Stogie back when he first made this suggestion, I might have been able to save that ahi panic. But I'm really liking this as an herb garden setup, so, you know, everything for a reason, even if that reason doesn't make a lot of sense. We're changing to a more regular light spectrum. Let's check out what's on the Darwin table here. Got a whole bunch of these little double cup systems. I tell you, they are so amusing to me, but I'm really enjoying them. So, yeah, I've got a bunch of kale there and... Still have two more of those cells to transplant, so that's going to be interesting. There's going to be lots of little kale plants all over the place. But I have noticed already a little bit of aphid infestation on these guys, so they're getting the paintbrush treatment. These little cups are so much easier to deal with for painting the aphids off. Um, I can't even begin to tell you. It's just, yeah, so handy. You just put a couple fingers over the main bit of soil and paint them all in there. I often find myself wondering if the aphids taste like the plant that they were harvesting. Like, do these ones taste like cabbage, whereas these ones would taste like oregano? That said, you don't really ever see um, aphids on oregano. You know, do these ones taste like tomatoes, or again, kale, peppers? Spider plants are one that I don't really ever see too many aphids on, unless they're absolutely desperate. So, that might be why I'm growing these things all over the place, too. I just put these ones down today. How tiny. You know, just itty bitty little things. And because, you know, they're spider plants and they can take the abuse, I didn't even bother to cut holes in the bottom of these. But that's been so easy too. It's just a little snip and snip. A pair of scissors, done. And it's it's working out really, really well so far. Just been using standard peat moss for most things still. Pretty happy about that. Almost knocked over my little science beaker. You had a nine pack set up here for the next next type of peppers but I haven't decided what it's going to be yet so they're just kind of happily pre-soaking these paper lantern seeds that uh, I saved I don't think anything's coming to that so I might just restart that container soon but the windowsill peppers I think this is the ahi fantasy it's doing all right now that it's come down here getting pretty regular shakings over the fish tank and that is dealing with my aphid situation as far as what is already here. It's the bad brains looking a little better since I took some of those larger leaves off of it. And then over beside this here we've got the reaper plant. Got some discoloring issues there that aren't thrilling me. But I will look through a couple of nutrient deficiency sheets that I've got and see what that is. 
because I still haven't added anything but dehumidifier water to this since, geez, months ago at this point. And since it's trying to put on all these little flower buds and put out all this growth, I'm guessing it's, it's using a lot of whatever it had. With the Santa Fe Grande seedlings here coming along nicely. One random little kale because it was left over from the cluster, so I stuffed it in there. Whoop! Knocking stuff over. Can't be good. Pair of scissors. Glad my toe wasn't involved in that. Some of the Naga Viper seedlings. Yeah, this one's got a true leaf on it, and that one does, so I'll probably be transplanting them tomorrow because much easier to wipe these of, clean of aphids um, once they're in those little cups than it is in these nine packs. So basically, as soon as anything's getting its true leaves, it's getting put into the mini cups and, uh, yeah, moved onto the uh, DIY LED shelf. Here we've got those, what, Caribbean red habaneros. Still see three, four that are coming up there. Might be all we get, but that's still a pretty good return for around here. You kind of still see a little basil coming up in there. Wouldn't mind seeing a few more pop up. But we'll wait, we'll wait. Yeah, so that's where the Darwin table is at. We've got all my little house plant cuttings over here. Well, in a random rosemary. Not quite sure why I put that on the shelf there, but probably just convenient at the time. Kind of nice to see the, the house plants just taking over the entirety of the house, though. Taking a look here at what's going under that uh, PVC LED light strip here. Got some decent growth going on on a couple of these larger... I don't know, I guess these would be a crack key type hydroponics setup. Keep taking these out and again painting off all the aphids to the fish tank. The fish are loving it. And then we've got all of my little tiny double cuppers here and again you know it's life in my dungeon so there are aphids here but really I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to encourage you not to worry about it too much. Between the potassium sulfate that's basically like a super B vitamin for plants and uh, my obsession with painting aphids to feed my fish, I think things are going to be much better this year. Last year I didn't get the fish until, what was it, February. So that's going to be a lot of plants saved right there. I worked it out and this little tray here should be able to hold, I think, 35 little um, mini setups without pushing them too close together. Got a few different varieties in here that I do know, like this garden salsa's there, and uh, let's see, there's another garden salsa there. The Naga's in here somewhere, Naga Viper, more garden salsa, and of course there's all those randoms from the compost. So it's going to be a really, really interesting year in the garden. I don't know if I'm going to get my 510 that I was hoping for, but I'm going to get a lot more plants this year, I think, than last. So that is super exciting. Speaking of last year's plants, seems like a good time to turn around. <laughs> Look at that mouse melon. I just, I am blown away. I would never have expected that thing to do so well under artificial light. It's just, really, it's blowing me away. Tomato is still trucking along. Kind of looks like it's dying out, but at the same time, there's a lot of new growth in the middle there. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I should trim it back and let the new growth come out and see what happens there. Got the Sugar Rush Cream still alive. Sugar Rush Red still alive. Sugar Rush Peach completely dead. Bit of a bummer, that one. But the Yellow Scorpion. <laughs> that crazed little pepper. So determined. So determined. One day I may actually get to try that. Uh, I was going through some of the old seeds that I've bought since I've been here because I still don't know what to put in that other nine pack. And it's like, yeah, Trinidad, Scorpion, Yellow. Nope, I think I've still got one of those. Just haven't tried it yet. That poor rosemary in the shelf there. Not the happiest plant about. Looking better than its friend the sage, though. We'll get to that in a minute. The El Oro de Ecuador. This one's kind of fun to try and take and shake over the fish tank. I'm finding new and interesting ways to get that done, though. I had a cup under here earlier, and I was washing the aphids into that and then dumping it in. And Yeah, I tried a few things. But... They make it a little bit easier on me because they try and climb to the end of the branches whenever possible. So at least I'm not trying to get the middle of the plant over the fish tank to paint them in there. And like I say, the fish, <laughs> they really seem to enjoy their aphid treats, so that's cool. Our little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. 
Needles aren't falling off it yet, so I'm going to take that as a good sign. We've got our other little trees down there. Still seem to be okay. No signs of life yet on these raspberry cuttings. Lots of other bits of life popping up in there, though. And then the hawthorns, sharp, sharp hawthorns that they are. There are little buds on the end that I don't know if you can see on this old camera. But still look glossy and like they're getting ready for uh, popping up in spring. So I don't know what's going on in there. A couple of probably tomato sprouts down there, though. Paper lantern pepper. This thing's been viciously cut back and we've got some new growth coming up there and there. Makes it a lot easier to paint this over the fish tank though. And here's that uh, poor sage I was talking about. It's a couple years old. It's been through a lot. So it might just be, you know, ready to be let go. But I'd like to think that I'll be able to find, you know, the sweet spot to put it in and it'll It'll come back for me, but if not, there's not there's a lot of uh, nice woody pieces here that I can go down to for cuttings. And I've heard taking a sage cutting from a woodier chunk, better chance of success. So, Nepalese bell. This does not look too terribly successful. This poor plant, though, I mean, if you followed along over the years that this plant has been with me, I've beat the tar out of this thing just to make it suffer. So, really quite rude of me. I can't blame it. MOA Scotch Bonnet. This thing took forever to grow outside. It's taking forever to grow inside. But it's still with us. It's got a nice color to it. It's starting to get a bit of decent separation as it's growing up towards the light. I was actually looking forward to that. So that is encouraging. Can't find my pruners <laughs> for the basement. So I haven't cut this sand dollar back yet. But still got some new growth coming in there. So that is all well and good and very exciting. Diefenbachia here, like I said, there's house plants all over the place. Speaking of which, I guess we should take a look at that pitcher plant. Camera seems to have gotten all fuzzy here anyway. Ah, the house plant shelf. Got um, an unnamed type of aloe. Figured I'd try that as a cutting. Apparently it's supposed to be super duper easy but I've never been able to do it. This particular one I let dry at the end and it closed itself up and did all of those things like you're supposed to wait and let it do so it doesn't rot in there. So I'm just occasionally watering it and hoping for the best. These little flaming caddy cuttings seem to be coming along. This particular s spider plant's trucking right along. The pitcher plant now has little Rex in here because he's got to hold up this little tiny pitcher it was trying to make its way into the soil. But this regrowing bit, there's lots that's coming off of that. That is super exciting. And it kind of makes sense because the rest of this is kind of running out of room to grow. It's basically at the light here. I don't know. Quite a thing though. If you're um, up for a laugh, look up true facts about carnivorous plants. Sounds like a boring documentary by uh, his voice at the beginning there, but give him a few seconds. He cuts loose, gets very entertaining. Some things about pitcher plants, so I tell you, never going to look at this plant the same again. Still, glad to have it. Weirdo that it is. And on that note, this weirdo's going to sign off for the day and get my butt upstairs. I got a fresh cup of coffee waiting for me as I understand it. And you know what? Sounds pretty good to me right about now. So... Not quite sure what the schedule is for the week upcoming. Make sure you're tuned into uh, all the different channels that interest you if you want to see what I'm up to. I'm getting a decent supply of eggs though, so I suspect there will be some uh, experimentation in the kitchen going on sometime soon. So yeah, could be interesting. May or may not see you there. Otherwise, for sure, I'll see you next Sunday. But hopefully there will be something garden related that happens between now and then. So yeah, either way, I'll see you then. Take care, everybody.